Hey, hey everybody, Brad Linder back at you again with part two of this uh, Firestorm Comics page that I'm doing up uh, for launch this week. And just want to share this over with the page real quick. So uh, bear with me just a second, getting me on the YouTube channel so we can uh, share it with everybody. And there we go. Okay, now when I left this one yesterday, hey Jim. Gary, Brian, wow, got everybody coming on. Hey, Victor. Oh, let's see. Uh, what I'm going to be doing tonight is, as you can see, right after we did this first off, right after we finished up the session, I went in and colored in this background just a little bit with a light blue and um, two shades of purple and a little bit of red in there to uh, get that whole thing going on. A little bit of hot pink, a little bit of red, a little bit of purple, uh, a darker purple and a little bit of brown to separate it from this guy here, from the Spirit of Fate. Now, I colored up uh, Quantum Jack, as we know. So I'm going to do this character, which I'm not going to reveal just yet, uh, who he is and what he's about yet. But I'm going to put him on board right now, and we're going to do this piece tonight. And then uh, if we have time, as long as we have time to, which it should be pretty quick, uh, I'm going to color out this panel and show you guys how to flesh this one out. All right? Then we're going to go on to the next. So uh, I should have the Invaders piece ready tomorrow. I have Captain America on uh, the page, but I did not get uh, the other two characters that I wanted on board, so we have to go from there. But uh, hang out with me. Keep up and, uh, you know, keep up the faith and all that, and uh, we'll get this going because we're going to knock it out. But I want to get this up this week, so that's the reason I'm doing this tonight instead. So starting out, I'm going to color his cape, and uh, I'm just going to jump right in here with this bright red it is a light 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 red uh, very bright very soft and I'm gonna go right in here and color in this cape because I want to get this guy knocked out very quickly and like I said I can't give you too much information on him because it'll spoil the story if I do and uh, I don't want to do too much of a reveal on the story itself uh, for you guys because then you won't read it so I mean let's be perfectly honest here we know what's gonna happen if I go off and tell you guys what's gonna set up you're not going to read it because you won't have to. So bear with me on that. We're going to knock this out. And then when this is all done, I'm going to go behind the scenes and uh, get it all polished up and ground down so, you know, it's all smooth and good, you know, good stuff, good looking and whatnot, and whatnot cleared up and all that. And all this runs together for print quality transition. So we won't have that problem. Now, whenever I do these characters, um, <clears throat> I always like to plant Easter eggs, and that's what I want to talk with you guys about on the technical aspects of doing this. Just because, I mean, the coloring is pretty simple. It's just onboard coloring. Uh, not too much of a big deal there. It's just coloring, okay? Well, the thing is, when you go in and do these transitions for these characters, I want you guys to take into consideration what's up, all right? Big time, because... When you're doing comic books, just like anything else, you have to prep. And so many people, whether you're doing marketing and you're one of my marketing students watching and hanging out and wondering what I'm doing with this crazy stuff, or if you're one of my other um, one of my other associated students and you want to come in with the art stuff, get on board with what you're doing and own it, okay? And the key way you do that is you go in and you plan Easter eggs for your artwork. And do this in everything you do. Uh, if you're the writer and artist for these projects, get off your keister, get in there and plan your stuff, okay? Just like we have to plan in marketing for these huge launches that, that everybody does, I do what's called a silent launch. And I do that on purpose, you know? I, I launch my business behind the scenes because I don't want you to necessarily know what I'm doing. And I want to get it out there, and then when it pops up in your face, you're like, oh, man, how did I miss that? Well, the reason is because of the fact that I go in and I do it that way. All right. I'm going to grab a darker blue here because this guy gets a fairly dark blue. And I want to make sure I have the right one so we don't get all funky in the colors. I'm going to grab over the proof page here. So <clears throat> verifying my colors. And nope, that's not it. There we go. Cool. Okay. Now back to this. But 
like I wanted to talk about, you know, you've got to plant Easter eggs in your marketing. And you've got to do it whether you're in comic books. It doesn't matter if you're in comic books. It doesn't matter if you're in internet marketing. It doesn't matter if you're selling pots and pans. If you don't sell and promote your marketing ahead of time with Easter eggs involved for promotions this time next year, you're not going to get this done, okay? And I know that sounds like a farce type of situation where it's like, you know, that's not true. That can't be true. You know, that's too far out. Well, I guarantee you, I'm doing stuff today that I've been showing you guys every single day that moves out. Everything that I do is going to comp and come back somehow a year from now. And you want proof of that? Check it out May 3rd when the sketchbook comes out that I've been doing this every day for a year. I do everything with the goals in mind for at least a year out. Uh, professional comic books. Marvel and DC plan a minimum of 18 months out on their stuff. So the books you're reading today were planned 18 months ago. That's why you can't submit to them with raw stuff and say, I want to put in this story because you guys have this great sideline going. I want to get this, you know, great story going in there and um, mix it up and show everything off. And my story is going to be perfect with what you got going on right now. But guess what? No, it's not. You want to know why? Again, 18 months out. They plan their budget. They plan their storylines. They plan their their uh, comprehensive stories overall at least 18 months out. Even under the Disney guys, they've still, and guys as in leadership, not as in guys as in G-U-Y-S. I'm talking about guys as in leadership, okay? They lead you in to a storyline 18 months away. And the reason they do that, or maybe even longer, because they've got a, had stories up to six years. Uh, Fear itself went out from, I, I think it, it ran for over a year and a half, and they planned that one for like five or six years before they ever touched it. They do that all the time, okay? And the reason they do that is because that's got to be put out for marketing. You've got to set that all up. So whatever story you're reading today was set up a, at least a year and a half ago. And if it wasn't, then you'll know it flops because of the fact that it won't be solid. So what you're getting right now from me has been set up a few years ago. You know, I've been setting this up since 2010, 2012, right around in there with this current incarnation and getting everything done. And then in 2015, I started sharing material and publishing books. And now the universe is finally built up. Here we are 2018, three years later. And I'm finally getting all this out there in full color and getting it out blasted to you guys where books are going to be coming out further than Catman Evolution and FSU Origins, which is Firestorm Universe Origins, which has been on the website for a while. So think about all that when all this is coming out. You know, I put this stuff out there way, way in advance, and you have to. You know, that's the, that's the Disney legacy behind Disney is because of the fact that they were so successful because they planned for decades and decades and decades on end of what they're building and what they're doing and all that cool stuff coming out. So you got to stick with it. I'm looking at my reference again, and we are going with the medium gray on the hair here. I just want to make sure because I don't have my color key in front of me. It's actually in the other office. So I'm checking everything as I go along with this page, which shame on me for that. That's not a good thing to do. Uh, if you're doing a coloring page, always use your color key. You know, keep your legend around. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's my bad. Now, as I'm going with these primary colors, once I lay down this, this final uh, panel here, I will be moving on to get uh, some more stuff up and get that going. I'm going to adjust the camera down to where we can see this over here just a little bit. So it's going to hold up a little better. Now, what I've got going on, I'm going to set this eraser under here so it'll hold the page up. But uh, I know, really crafty and technical, right? But uh, what we've got going on as far as this goes, whenever I knock all of this out, and I get this going. What I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to release the entire first arc of the books. And by that, I mean every issue that comes out from here on out after this Legends uh, setup is going on and this origin setup is going on. I've got everything in place already for five, six, seven, ten issues down the line. So when all this pops out, you guys will be able to have all that done. And a lot of people say, well, you're using a Disney-style philosophy. Well, no, I'm not. I'd be using the same thing that every great writer in continuity has used for years, for decades. And, you know, every comic book company used to go from the 50s 
and come out and say, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to use a book and we're going to put out a book. Okay, it's done. We've got heroes, we've got stories, we've got stuff. That's it. And that's the way they would put out a book up from the 30s all the way out to the 1950s. Now, they would do con uh, continuity titles and things, but it wasn't the norm. The norm was to give you a digest of harder comics. So what you would get would be one-shot stories in an anthology type of uh, digest book rather than getting full stories and ongoing series. I mean, they would appear everywhere across the board, and you would get four or five comic books, and you would have that story appear here and there along the way. But the problem was they didn't become sequential until later on. I mean, Batman and Superman were trademark books. They were landmark projects that carried on from their from their original run as books like that. A lot of titles, like I said, a lot of titles were sequential and it was fine, but they were standalone stories. They weren't meant to be in a continuity line of the universe of the character itself. I hope that makes sense for you because that's exactly the way it was meant to be. They were meant to be standalone stories and create stories, you know, uh, created stories along that way in standalone issues. So they were like mini movies at the time. And people like Bill Finger came in and Jack Kirby came in and Joel Schuster came in. And, you know, the, the, those guys came along and started doing continuity stories because they wanted a great deal of work because they couldn't get hired. Okay. They, would get, they were going through the late depression and early recovery market trying to figure out what they were going to do as, as work to support their family and their kids, which was unheard of at the time, you know, because freelance artists worked on whatever popped up. They got thrown a plot, and that was it. And, you know, you did whatever continuity piece came up or whatever advertisement piece came up or whatever came along down the pipe. You know, you weren't hired exclusive. You were hired freelance. And, I mean, we're talking like Peter Parker being, you know, fresh out of high school going to work for the Daily, you know, the Daily Bugle and uh, having to deal with all that crap from J. Jonah Jameson. Pretty much the same thing. And these guys were 30 and 40 years old as professional artists and still living hand to mouth, kind of like um, a 16 year old kid starting out. You know, you're fresh out of high school, you're fresh out of out of college. And you can't get the job without the car, and you can't get the car without the job. I say that all the time, you know. There's people out there like that. And these guys had to have work. So they were the biggest influence on regular continuity more than anything else. And that's why people started creating their own comics and uh, making their own legacy in the work. Not because they wanted to create their own creations like most of us want to do, because we want to tell the stories out as a vibe, but we wanted to tell the stories back then to make money. I mean, they were starving. So, you know, as a creator yourself, where does that come to us full circle? Create your landmark Easter eggs to plant your work ahead of time. And that advantage in comics has helped me with so many different things that I do in marketing and otherwise in business because of the fact that it allows me to set up everything to come later down the line and preset those Easter eggs, as I call them, or the seeds along the way to make that happen. So, you know, if you're seeing a comic book and you're reading something right now, like this page here, I'm already a good year and a half ahead of this story-wise. I mean, that's why it's being released. And why else would I show this thing right up front like this? Well, because of the fact that I can. I mean, this is my, my value line coming in and saying, okay, I'm going to give this out to you as material to show you what's coming because of the fact that what's already coming to you right now has already been a long time for me. Think about that one. And that's the way you should do your artwork, you know, because you'll see things like uh, crossovers and uh, little tidbits and Easter eggs in other books. Because this is a self-contained universe, you will be able to see all this cool stuff come in to these panels. And in a background fight, you may see someone else fighting across the way in a shadow and not know exactly who it is until later on whenever that person comes up. You know, I'm giving you those little Easter egg hints now to watch out for in the books so that you can think ahead and try to figure out what's going on. I like to figure out those puzzles, you know, and I like my readers to figure out those puzzles as I plant those seeds. I want you to wonder what's coming up because if you take interest in a character that's coming along, 
I want you to know what's going on with it and say, okay, this is where this is possibly going to go. And I want you to think about it. You know, it's those events. Um, Walking Dead, the most popular uh, comic book created uh, theme show on, on air right now. It's based off of a comic book. It's based off of a, a series. And it's the most watched show on television right now, on cable television. So think about that. Yeah, I mean, even Game of Thrones is being beat out by Walking Dead in the regular airtime. Okay? Still, even till this day, it's still being it's beating out. Kirkman's killing it with the earnings that he's getting off of that. Okay? Now, the comic book is still best-selling as well. So think about that one. That particular model got so famous because of the fact that it was one, it was unique, and it's a great storyline. But the big thing that goes into it is the fact that he plants Easter eggs that you get to see through the actions, and you're going, oh, man, that didn't go the way I wanted it to. And it's these little plot twists. So say this is a line of the road you're traveling with that storyline. And then every once in a while, he's got these little side notes. You have the principal concept going down the road here, and then you have these this – serpentine pattern of little tricks and turns and plot twist and that's what's rocking on that so bad okay that's what's making that work and bad being good in this case that's what's working so badly through that now most people don't get it, it <laughs> see uh, Kevin just said he figures out what's gonna happen before it happens and it ticks his wife off well I, I understand where you're coming from but um, <clears throat> The thing of it is, though, is in business, you have to plant those Easter eggs to keep keep people entertained and on the edge of their seat as to which way it's going to go, left or right. What they what they get you with is most people say, well, I'm not going to give up the storyline and go, and it's, it's an okay book, but it's not great. The ones that give you little plot, plot twists and turns, they either go one of two ways. They either go straight out on a branch and screw it up and give you all the information you need, and then you figure it out and you're screwed. Or... They get the fan base involved where, like Kevin just mentioned, he, he figures it out by the little plot twist they give along the way. Those little Easter eggs are what I'm talking about. And if you do that in your business, no matter what it is, it will come out tenfold stronger because they will never know what you're going to do, but they will always be excited to find out. Does that make sense? Do that in your comics and do that in your business. Well, no matter which one you're watching it for, okay? Think about that. I mean, seriously, think about that. That's an amazing, amazing, amazing thing happening right there, right in front of your eyes. And if you want to be someone that, that makes a comic book and it goes and takes off and runs like gangbusters and you want people to thrive on it, know what you're doing within that comic book to make all of that come out. Because once you do, you're going to change the game. You're going to change the game. You're going to lock in your footing. And you're going to make it happen. And it's going to be totally different than the way that people expect it to be and expect you to be in turn. So think about that. I mean, it's that simple. So many people just go, well, you know, I, I don't want to give up my storyline and I don't want to give up my plot. And they play it real close to the chest. And it's like, I don't want to give up my character. And they're so busy trying to make it perfect that they end up never putting it out. And then someone comes out with something similar and they're like, hey, that's my idea, man. I thought about that. You know, Rumpel Peel's head spray. I thought about that. My dad had a bald spot, and I, I spray painted his head, you know. And um, <laughs> that's pretty much the way it goes. You know, everybody's like watching late-night infomercials and going, hey, man, that's my idea. Well, guess what? You didn't put it out there, but yet you put it out in the universe by thinking about it so much. Because what you think about comes about. You know, that's the traditional uh, visionary science of the secret and all these great teachings in marketing. And the thing is, is if you put that much energy into it and you don't do it, it's going to manifest somewhere else because it's got to manifest because it's been created as an idea right out of your nugget. Think about that. Think about it. It's shocking. It, it really, really is shocking the way all that comes together. So you got to start thinking about it because it'll get you in the butt later. And, that, you know, I, I seriously believe that wholeheartedly. And as you're going along with these comic books, be sure you put in your, your little Easter eggs. Don't be afraid, you know. Um, that, that's the thing. you gotta, you got to put it out there and get it done. And stop sitting on it. 
get it out there. Get it out there. Get it out there. Get it out there. The digital age is here. Comics are moving more and more professionally digital because uh, it has finally been a concept that's been received well as print and digital, not print versus digital anymore because the two main two have gone to it. Uh, Disney is using their platform for the Marvel Now platform and putting out digital comics every freaking month. DC, same thing. They went to the DC digital platform and they started going on Amazon and Comixology and uh, Motion Comics and all these other places and started kicking it in gear. Now they do digital comics as well. They used them as a um, marketing ploy for years and they were giving away thousands and thousands and thousands of and you know comic books digitally and not even thinking about it. And it got up into the millions of copies of these comics going across digitally the same way. And they finally said, whoops, we better stop that. So now we have all this going on with, um, you know, like I said before, Image has been the, the front runner in this. They go off and get out all these great books and put out all their stuff in print and digital on demand. And they've been doing it for a good 10 years ahead of everybody else. I mean, I know McFarlane himself has been doing it since 2007, and we're in 2018 right now. So, you know, embrace the innovation and embrace the change or else you're going to lose your butt. But as far as this goes with comic creation, get out there and stagger that stuff out. You know, put in those plots. Uh, I like to put in the plots and, and put in taste of stuff that's to come very quickly rather than holding off for these secret, you know, reviews and reveals and all that. Because with the Internet, you're not going to get anything secret anymore. It doesn't happen that way. What ends up happening is you put the information out there and you either they either grab it and run with it and it's successful because you put it, positioned it right and put it out there properly, or you didn't release it in time and then everybody's like, well, we missed it, sorry. So you got to start thinking 6, 8, 12 months in advance and start kicking this stuff out. And if you are waiting to get your comic book out there, I officially give you permission to do it today. Release it right now. Whether it's a web comic, whether it's a, a traditional print comic, whether it's a digital comic, get it out there immediately and start branding yourself because of the fact that you have to let that book brand itself, okay? You have to let that book brand itself. You have to have a little time to, to, for people to find it, for it to move through, and it to get you know noticed and picked up and all that good stuff. Get it on Comixology. Get it in Amazon if that's your thing. Get it in whatever else you can get it on, drive through Comics or wherever else you can get it. And I've got a system coming up here pretty quick, a service for the same thing, if you're interested for comics uh, to get spread out across the web. Now, I'm not soliciting that service because of the fact that it's not ready for that yet, nor is it going to be something that I'm going to push real heavy. If you find it, you find it. If you don't, you don't. I hope you do because it's going to be a big one. But whatever, that's part of the, my giving back for what's happening in the industry, okay? I want to help out and give back on that, and that's the way that's going to work. But anyway, I just want to go in here and uh, set the grounds for this, okay? What I like to do is I like to go along and say I'm going to go five issues ahead in each storyline, in each issue that I have, because I want to make sure that everything is in hand whenever it comes to life. So when issue one goes down of something, I'm already working on issue five through seven, okay? And that's not just ahead of time for uh, production level purposes. That's ahead of time to plant that seed to get the bigger story and bigger image out there for you, okay, to get the bigger picture going. And if you don't, it'll bite you in the butt, you know what I mean? I keep saying that, but the thing is, is it will. It will bite you so hard because of the fact that everything that come down the line it's already been done, and that's the way comics work. And everybody else is putting comic books out there right now ahead of you uh, that isn't doing one issue off books. They're months ahead of you. They're months ahead of you. Image is months ahead of you. Uh, all of your stuff on uh, Marvel, all of your stuff on DC, all of your stuff in Image, it's you know Dark Horse, uh, whoever you pick. They're working months and months and months in advance, okay? Now, you have to have that in mind when you get off of the roller coaster, which is creating your comic. 
You can't just go month to month anymore. You've got to think about a business because if you're going to do this and you're going to make it go, you got to be out there and make you know six months ahead, eight months ahead, a year ahead, and you have to plant those Easter eggs in your comics now to make those exist because the comic you're doing today right now has to sell the comic you're doing seven months down the line because if they don't buy this one, they'll never see the seventh one down the line. Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope so. I hope it really does. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I, I really like that movie, Jim. Uh, Full Metal, the Full Metal Alchemist, I love that program. And it, it's one of those things, man, they're bringing it full circle, just like you said. I think it's going to be a great project. I love the, the series anyway. But as far as that goes with everything else, I, uh, I've been following it too. <clears throat> But as far as comics go particularly and your business itself on top of that, make sure you guys be sure to do that because the worst thing you can do – I'm going to make this guy have a uniform here. The worst thing you can do is hesitate in comics or any other business. All right, You do not want this stuff to come back and bite you in the rear because you weren't ready for it. And it will tell you flat out, the market will tell you flat out if you're doing well or not, way before you ever have to come across that whole situation. And so many people go, well, I don't want to have to do that. You know, that means I have to draw five comic books before I can release one. Well, guess what? You have to to make it work. You really have to. And if you don't, you're not going to make it anyway because you're not producing enough to make business anyhow. So don't even bother. I know that sounds weird, but it's 100% true. And I know that may sound harsh to a lot of people because I hear people all the time, oh, I'm going to make a webcomic and I'm going to do it monthly and it's going to be great and da-da-da-da-da and it's going to be awesome and da-da-da-da. And then the thing is they never get to come out with that because of the fact that they never cross the line and they can't figure out why it won't sell and they can't figure out why it won't do this and they can't figure out why it won't do that. Well, the reason it won't do that is because you're already killing it because you haven't promoted it enough. You know, Diamond and Previews and Comics specifically already knows what's coming out six months from now. They already promote, they're already advertising six months from now. Okay. You got to get in there and get you, get your head in the game. And this is the same thing I teach my students in business because it's like, well, what have you got for this time now? You know, what are you promoting now for next year? I see what you're doing this month. I see the campaign is running and closing this month. What are you doing six months from now? What are you doing a year from now? Oh, well, I didn't think about that. Oh, well, I, didn't, I don't know. I haven't thought about that yet. Well, you're basically shooting yourself in the head by playing career roulette. You can't plan a business and say that you're claiming it if you're not doing the business itself. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I, I really hope it does. So many people fail at that harshly. And the reason they do fail at that is because of the fact that they don't go and do the work. And then they wonder what's happening and what's going on. It's because they haven't prepared. If I can't plan something for a year in advance, especially with an Easter egg in a comic book, I don't do it. Because if you can't build that storyline up to make that fit perfectly where you can introduce all the key players to make that happen, there's no use in doing it. None. Absolutely none. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, hey, man, that's harsh. You know, I got this great idea for my comic book, and you're telling me I can't do it now. Well, no, I'm not saying you can't do it now. I'm just saying you can't do it the way you want to do it as specifically as, you know, throwing it out there and getting it done because you can't just throw it up there and do it. I mean, you can, but you won't make any money at it. And that's the big catch-22 with that. And that's a lot of the reason that I took everything down in my business and started revamping it. And it took me almost a year, almost a year to get these sites where I wanted them. It took me almost two years to get everything story-wise that I wanted in place, in the material that I have. And the whole reason I did it is because of the fact that I did, I did it that way on purpose, okay? Now, the reason we did 
all these Easter eggs and stuff and taking so long and setting this up is because of the fact that I wanted to feed the market this content and I wanted everybody to know that this is stable, this is coming, and whenever you see it, you're going to know that you're going to get quality stuff. And whether you like my artwork or not, whether you like this story or not, uh, that's, that's relative, okay? Nobody's going to like everything. And we, the way you do business and find out that you're doing good is because p specific people start to take interest and other people lose interest. You're not going to be fan, you know, you're not going to have fans of everybody. Uh, not everybody likes every artist. Not everybody likes every, every comic book. Not everybody likes every art style. And the reason for that is because we have individual taste and individual directions, and that's okay. That's okay. We're supposed to be that way. That proves we're individuals. So with that said, planting these Easter eggs in your content is going to save you tenfold on damages from what would be otherwise useless material. And by that, I mean going in and saying, okay, I'm going to set up this comic book character this way, and I'm going to build up this villain, and then this person's going to change over, and that's going to be the way it happens. If you plant those Easter eggs like that, you can build those characters for long term and make connections with them. And then when it happens, it's like, oh, man, that sucks. It's like on the, you know, the, again, the Walking Dead example. It's like when, you know, certain characters get killed off. You, you build up all that longevity with those characters and you know what's going on with them. And then you see them get killed. And you're beside yourself with distraught, uh, you know, because of the fact that uh, they're dead now. Sadly enough. And the way all that works in place in this type of business is because of the fact that you get all of that in front of you and they say, okay, you got this character going on, you've got this character, you got this character, now this one's a villain. But, oh man, why that guy go, you know, why that guy go bad? Well, you put him in a situation where he can go bad and change it. Um, once you tell the origin of a character, you can stack different experiences on that character and build them out the way you want to without having to worry about retelling the origin every time you tell the story. Does that make sense? I hope so. Because that, that is a huge thing right there. So many places teach to go in and do this wonderful thing. I'm looking for a lighter brown here. They teach a, a wonderful thing of going in and Oh, we got to tell the, you know, we're going to revamp the movie and we're going to tell the, the iconic story of, of Bruce Wayne's trauma again in, you know, the Batman story. Well, guess what? We've already seen that 80 times. You can go ahead and stack the movies now. And once DC and Warner Brothers finally got that concept, they finally started hitting home runs again with the movies. And whether you like the modern incarnation or, you know, whatever of the new movies, you have to accept the fact and be cool with the idea that they're at least they're growing the universe finally instead of retelling the same four or five movies over and 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 over and, over. and did I mention over? So think about that. Build your comic characters that same way. You know, don't go in and tell the origin every stinking issue. You don't have to do that. Just by touching base on it. Um, the Spider-Man crew made that book so popular because every time that they built up the continuity for it, guess what they do? They do, Instead of saying, this is the story of Peter Parker. He was bitten by a radioactive spider. Now he spits webs and swings on walls and, you know, climbs up the butts of villains and, and works out the day. Well, guess what? You know, all that twisted stuff doesn't matter. What they would do is they would put in a, ca a caption where for a good... 15 years, every time you opened a Spider-Man comic book, it was him stuck on a wall eating a donut or him up on a roof patrolling or something like that. And the reason they would do that is they would have him do his, his internal thought bubbles. And I know you guys know this. He would have those issues where they would have internal thought bubbles and Peter would be talking to himself. Man, you know, I, I really love being Spider-Man. You know, thank you to that spider. I owe it, you know, a great deal of gratitude. And I, I sure miss Uncle Ben and would give that, you know, with great power speech. And it was always these little self-internal chats that he would have that would build him out. And then all of a sudden the story would take off and then, boom, you'd have the villain, the story, and all the good stuff going on. 
and you would be zipping through the issue without any qualms. And you could pick Spider-Man up at any given issue and know exactly what's going on because, one, it was a self-contained story, and if you didn't, they recapped it with thoughts or started the story off instantly with, you know, two days ago. They would start off with a flashback sequence of uh, as a leader and had Spider-Man flying across the screen getting hit by the Hulk. And it would say, two days ago. And then it would go right into the story and it would pick right back up. And you would instantly catch up and pick up. And the reason they would do that is, again, to give you that continuity and give you that instant intro into Spider-Man's world without having to go back and explain 30 years of continuity. Every single issue. And they wouldn't have to put that cheesy uh, intro you know, inside the cover or inside the first page. They would have it mixed into the dialogue, and it would be part of the story, and you'd be ready to rock and roll with that. Think about that. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it really hard. Think about it. Okay, stop thinking about it. Now, we're going to move on with... Um, <laughs> we're going to move on into the Easter egg concept. What I like to do is I like to have my Easter eggs planted in the background. Um, you see these people here in the background, right? You see these people here in the background, these figures. I could take any one of these figures that I wanted and in an instant give them a backstory and make them an accidental hero or accidental villain or accidental major player. Instantly. I could have this guy run into this building and, and hide behind a counter and use his cell phone and call his boss and be, end up being a reporter and make himself famous or being an eyewitness to it, make him famous that way. Um, I, I can make him have an accident during the fight and become a hero or a villain. I could make him do whatever I wanted to do. And the reason I do that is because of the fact that I, I have a box of cards that I keep, and I stock those. And I'll put them in there, and I may not use them for five or six years. But I guarantee you, if they show up, you will know it. And the reason I want that to happen is because I want to have a treasure trove of different characters and plots and extensions. Because say I have writer's block today, I want to be able to go back and pull this guy out of the card box and say, hey, I need a character. So boom, there's a story. And it's related to this character and this character and this character. And we have that already set up. And you'll instantly know where it is because it's already in the previous issue, right? I can flash back to this panel and say, remember this panel? And we give a flashback sequence of starting off with back in June of 1990 or June 2015. Let's say June 2015. So when this appears, boom, we're done. I can do a flashback, show this guy run in here. And then do a two-page story on him, and boom, it's instantly up to date. And then say, and now. And then continue right on, picking up with wherever he is in the book. It's that simple. It's really, really, really simple. And nobody does it. And I mean, nobody does it. I mean, a lot of people say they plant Easter eggs, but the thing is, is they don't. They really don't. Now, they'll go off and say, I, I wrote, you know, I'm going to write this guy. I'm going to take this guy out of this picture and do that. But they don't plan it that way from way back when right now. Because I've already got plans for two of these people, actually. And this main character landing on the street, done deal, man. Done deal. So think about that one. Just think about it. I'm going to go with a, uh, a light flesh color here because this is pavement. And I want this to look like a different piece of stone. So there we go. Just kind of smudging that in a little bit to give it a little color. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go back over here. And I'm going to give this a soft purple coat. Buildings are all different colors these days. And I like to use uh, vibrant colors when I paint buildings because... That's the way architecture is, you know. I mean, modern architecture, not so much, but comic architecture can be whatever color you want it to be, and I want it to be bright and vibrant, and I want it to be in your face. So we're going to have a purple garage here. I like the idea of having that, that garage door on that warehouse right there. And we're going to make this nice and purple, and I know my big hand's in the way. But as we go along with this stuff, like I said, do that same thing, you know. Um, I like to color vibrant colors. Let's switch over into coloring now. I, you know, I love to use vibrant colors, and I knock this stuff out with no qualms, no problem. I love to use this kind of thing 
because of the fact that I can pop in any color I want, and I know it's like everybody's like, well, 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 that's not realistic. That's not the way colors work. That's not this, that, and the other. Well, guess what? I don't care. I'm doing the book that I want to do. You should do the book you want to do. You really should. You really, really should. So many people get so bent about this kind of stuff. And it doesn't have to be that way. Color the way you want to color. I've seen people go off and use extreme colors. I used to love the old heavy metal books when they used watercolors and pastels and would just use whatever color came to mind. And none of it made sense, but everybody loved it. And the reason is, is because it was kind of psychedelic and it made you, it just engulfed you and you were like, wow, that's a pop of color. Wow, that's a pop of color. Wow, that's a pop of color. And you're so busy trying to figure out the story and consume all the color, you don't even get phased out with it. I mean, it's true. It's 100% true. So keep that in mind and think about it whenever you're doing this kind of stuff because it'll wake you up real quick. Now, I'm going to go back in here with these with the light orange for these lights because I want to differentiate just a little bit. But I want to kind of bring in some contrast with this as well from the flame here. So I'm going to kind of put in this orange just a little to where it's like ref reflecting just a little off of this stuff to show up. Just a little color. Not much. Just to show it's close enough to give some highlights and refraction off of it that way. Now, <clears throat> we've got all this going on. We've got him colored in. We've got it, la got it landed. I'm going to go back and do um, some shading now. I'm just going to kind of blend this stuff in just a little bit because I'm not going to heavily blend this and shade it yet, okay? Because I don't want to bleed it in so much that, you know, you guys go, I want three colors on everything. And I don't do that with these, not this piece anyway, because it's dated and I want it to look a certain way. But I go into the darker spots and I pop in a couple of pieces like this with a darker shade, uh, just a contrasting shade to shadow it up just a little bit darker before I blend it all together. That way it'll all blend and it'll look nice and neat. And then when I blend this down, it'll still have those darker spots and give me that natural shading effect without trying to tear up the piece because of three different colors laid into it. I don't have to do that. See, just that accent color is all we need. But the main point of what I wanted you guys to learn about this tonight was landing those Easter eggs in here, not just coloring this stuff up and watching me do this, but to learn how to do the Easter egg concept because in comics, that is a crucial thing for storytelling. And if you ever want to know how they build up TV shows and how they build up comics and they make them work so well, it's because of the fact that they build up concepts. You're already looking at, you're watching episode one, but they've already done through episode 25. And the reason you're so engulfed is because there's a story building there that you're waiting to see unfold. And it doesn't unfold until later in the series, until you get that, that part out of the way. And you need to do that in comics because we don't do that in comics anymore. You know, everybody's waiting for the big key thing and it doesn't come down the pipe that way anymore at all. Think about that. Now, I know I'm shaking the desk here, but I'm scrubbing really hard on that to clean it up so I can go back and fix that because I went over the line a little bit. <clears throat> but anyway, there you go. We have that going on. We've got him laid out. We've got him laid out. We've got this laid out. We've got the, the shot laid out. Now... Before I leave you guys, I just want to say this one more time. Think about your comic layouts. Think about the Easter eggs. Think about the story you're doing today. How will it reflect on selling issue number seven from issue one? Issue three should be selling issue nine. Issue, not, issue five should be selling issue 12. You know, it, just space them out. It should be five to ten issues up, down the line. And if you're thinking that way in your business, you'll always be thinking ahead and you'll always be thinking of the next story to tell to move the ne next issue because you'll be telling this story to get on to where you're at already down the timeline. Think about that. Big, big thing. I get asked that all the time and I finally decided I'm just going to answer it and tell how I do it. So you guys can see what's coming ahead. You know, if you're reading a comic book from me from Firestorm Comics, I guarantee you that you're going to be reading something now that's going to build up between now and issue 10, and you're going to see it come to a culmination. Are you going to have to wait that long to figure it out and get the story? No, you'll have the issue to issue completion. So you'll have the full chapter, but it's a chapter in a much bigger view, view and picture and legacy. 
think about that because people don't do that anymore, especially in independent comics. And they don't do it in business either. You know, I see so many people that I consult with go, well, you know, my business sucks right now. I don't have any money coming in. Well, what's your projection for the next year? What's your business plan? What's your model? What are your, your issue seven, eight, nine while you're on issue one? And they can never answer it. If they don't have an answer, instantly I know that they don't have a business plan and they're not projecting. So you have to make a plan to do that. So with that said, I hope you guys got a little insight out of this. I know I talked a lot, and I hope the, the artwork looks great. I'm going to knock this out and post this up on the page this week. Thank goodness it's finally all going to be done. Now that this one's done, I'm going to tone this up just a little bit more here and there and tweak it and then smooth this sucker down and then post it up on the page with the new revamp this week. You guys are a blast. Thank you for hanging out with me. And as always, we're going to take a deep breath here. You guys know the rule. We've got this rock for a limited amount of time. It's great hanging out and partying with you guys. Let's make it great for the next generation. Talk to you tomorrow.